Hello and welcome, Hartford, Connecticut, United States of America, Kirk Dupe, Snacks Dupe, Jeffrey Saran, Rap Saran. We're here in Hartford for more expanding action, uh, which is kind of what you and I have just been covering the last couple times. Yeah, we're a little bit uh, used to this right now between Greensboro and Toronto, uh, having a little bit of action here, uh, expanded format. Yeah, nice and fresh. So since we are two Kentucky boys finding ourselves on the East Coast on this Kentucky Derby Day, just want to throw a quick shout out to that uh, event in Louisville, Kentucky. I've got my uh, my racing silks on, and I'll be jockeying the commentary <laughs> booth all weekend long. Uh, we've got a pretty good matchup: with Joe Rudiger, Michael Catron, um, and they are kind of gearing up. They're starting us a little bit early today, catching us with the pants down. But we're going to do our best. So a little uh, early there, but we got two uh, you know well-equipped players here that have uh, you know both are very established in the uh, community right now. Both playing two, well, one a little more familiar, and one is kind of like. Where did you find these cards? <laughs> yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll, wait, we'll, wait, we'll wait a second on the, the where did you find these cards deck. Joe Rudiger bringing uh, kind of the, the flavor of the, of the day from uh, Daytona Regionals, uh, Zora Control deck. Talk to us about it, Jeff. Yeah, he's going back to a little bit more the, the back play, the traditional Zora Control list, going with uh, you know, a heavy little muck line, heavy Rangaroo from the, uh, with the, um, from the Ultra Prism set, as well as playing Giraffe Rig and Articuno GX. Articuno GX being that spicy card that kind of popped up at NAIAC last year. Um, and uh, but traditionally, this is a just you know Zor control deck. Take your opponent out of the game, get rid of his energies, and then once you're it's all said and done, start Riders beating. That's right. And on uh, Katron's side of the board, Reggie Rock promo, uh, the one I believe it's Omega Barrier. Yep. Uh, can't be targeted by your opponent's trainers. Uh, typically found as kind of a non EX attacker in uh, the primal ground on deck that we see kind of running around uh, expanded from time to time. Um, but that's just the focus in this. No, no ground yep. on. Uh, Michael Cantron says, give me Stellar Wish Jirachi. Give me Reggie Rock. Give me a Bunnelby Rototiller Burrow. Used to be the old Waylord counter yep. uh, back in the back in the day last season. And lastly, Hoopa with Scoundrel Guard to protect itself from those EXGX Pokemon. One Darkness Energy to be able to start using that Cybolt attack. This definitely looks like a, like a Groudon Light or a Diet Groudon that you get in the Kroger section, kind of you know. And it's just <laughs> this the, <laughs> the backup Groudon here with the Omega Barrier doesn't hit as hard, but 90 X. Uh, only going to take one prize if you do knock it out. If you do. If you do. Because of the cars up, in here. Exactly. That brings up the next point. Focus Sash found easily with uh, things like Adventure Bag and Karina. Uh, but another key little uh, four copies, uh, Last Chance Potion. If your Pokemon has 30 HP or less, go on and heal 120 off of it, which uh, if you do quick maths, Reggie yep. Rock fully healed after something like that. It's very, it's very, very keen strategy right here, and I think it actually like goes hard after the Zora Control deck here. So we're actually going to get a good chance here to see how this deck, if it was the right meta call, and how it oper operationally functions against uh, the Control deck. Now, keep in mind, um, Joe does play Alolamuk, which will shut down Stellar Wish. Will not shut up that Omega Barrier, though. It will not, and that's going to be key here. Um, Focus Sash also, once the Pokemon is uh, completely healed up, not losing any energy, that Focus Sash is reactivated. Mm -hmm. um, so a couple more uses out of Focus Sash, and you can't feel blowered off because of the Omega Barrier. So uh, Michael Catron really calling a shot here, hoping to feed on Zorark decks. He gets fed one round one. We're going to see if this uh, wacky deck can pull it through get Hartford started on, a, on a, uh, the right foot. I will say I think Articuno GX is going to be big in his matchup here to get rid of all energies on the Regirock and have him refresh himself there. It's probably going to be his play where he has to go Articuno GX, clear the energies off the board, and then chip with Riot is beating after that. It's probably going to be the way to go for Joe. But we'll see what pans out here. Uh, we see uh, Joe is on the button here. Uh, Zoru in the active. Uh, natural Bridget, and that means straight out of hand. Didn't have to search for it or didn't really have to dig for it using maybe something along the lines of uh, Tapu Lele GX. Um, I wonder if this deck was ever mentioned at all to Joe from from Katron, or was Katron has kind of kept them in his back pocket here? If uh, if he knows going to his matchup a certain strategy to go about it here, but right off the back, getting the, getting the whole family of Zeru on the board. All Zeru's on the board. George, Joe taking a quick look at his deck to see what's in there. Uh, something fun that I saw in Michael Katron's hand that we didn't get to on the list. Max Elixir. That's another uh, advantage that Reggie Rock uh, gets to play is uh, is Max Elixirs because unlike Groudon EX or Primal Groudon, you can't Max Elixir onto a Primal Groudon. But since he's just using Reggie Rock, those Max yep. Elixirs stay live uh, most of the game. Yeah, definitely a powerful form of energy acceleration here. This list is actually really well put together here. Even the Aspect Scramble Switch gonna be able to uh, <laughs> any kind of damage that happens or anything that might have you know affect the active Reggie Rock, you can know, scramble switch to a new one and start fresh. Exactly. Last little bit of info about Michael Catron. We're gonna call this a high roll deck, or at least I will. Five fighting energy for three max elixir. Uh, wow. <laughs> yes. Parallel City coming down. Ditto prison from Joe and a pass. 
escape rope for Michael Catron. Uh, Land Crush might be able to take a knockout here. So 30, uh, 30 damage if he gets a Fighting Energy. Wow. On the okay, so just your point right there. Five energies in the deck only. Still hits the Elixir. Another attachment. Two energy, Focus, Focus Sash. Sash. And an N. Um, maybe Michael just saying, uh, maybe I don't want to jump in too quick with this Regirock. Uh, maybe get a, a good use out of Stellar Wish before I, I bring the, the Regirock into the active. Uh, but uh, pretty good turn one there for Michael. And Joe's got to be thinking, huh, not something I've seen before. I definitely don't think this is on anyone's uh, list right now as far as cars they've seen in a very long time in the expanded format. Probably not since Dallas last year, uh, to be honest. But... Um, Ends coming through. Seller Wish. Going to be uh, looking at the top five cards of the deck. Last chance potion, I believe, is what it was. A skateboard already in hand, uh, which, as we know, a skateboard reducing the retreat by one and allowing you to retreat through sleep and paralysis. Uh, so Stellar Wish putting uh, a little Jirachi to bed. Not going to be an issue here. So we can grab the Tropical Beach there, instantly bumping the Parallel City. There is the Hoopa. This deck has all of the bells and whistles, all the tricks ready for the Zork matchup. And right there, Beach to close it. Beach bounces to Parallel City, announces Tropical Beach, draw back up to seven. However, your turn ends. Not that big of a detriment here in the style of deck that Michael's playing. Computer Search off that end for Joe. Crushing Hammer, and I believe that was an Alolan Grimer uh, getting thrown away to the computer. And here we go. Uh, one card slips through. Did you get to see what it was? Yeah, it looks like it was Professor Sickerborn here. So he's going to do a quick dump. He may have another search card here um, as he is still eyeing through the deck to make sure he knows what his next play is going to be here. But no Zorak on board yet. Um, I'm sure he's going to be eyeing down to get that a little muck down ASAP to handle this uh, Hoopa in the active spot as it will shut off his Scoundrel Guard ability. Uh, but we'll see here what happens on this Sycamore. Joe shuffling up. Michael putting himself in a good spot. If he forces Joe to focus on trying to get an Alolan Muck set up, that's just one less Zorak GX that's out there. Um, and maybe slowing down Joe's uh, own draw. And obviously these Zorak decks want to motor through as many cards as humanly possible. Field Blower is going to take care of that escape board and the Tropical Beach. However, Focus Stash sticks around. Omega Barrier, as we mentioned, lots of cards going down to Sycamore. Here's the, and here's the big thing here that Michael can honestly do. He's at a great spot. He already has two energy in the Red Rock. One more Elixir can get him set up here with another attachment, and then he'll be able to go to go hit the races there. Um, however, he needs to get at least another Red Rock down, and that way he can rotate through both of those. But keep his prize count low. That's going to be the thing here is not offer up six other prizes outside of Red Rock here. Ultra Ball pitching an Alolan Muck and an N. So Joe may be thinking Alolan Muck, not that necessary in this matchup. I've got other ways around uh, maybe... Hoopa's Scoundrel Guard. Going to grab a Zorak GX, put that in the active. Maybe uh, maybe look at a trade. Do a couple trades. He may already actually have another Alolan Muck in his hand as well. I can't, I couldn't tell there, but we'll see here. First trade, Parallel City going to the bin. Doesn't think he's going to need that. Not in this game. And Alolan Muck right off the top. Uh, must be nice. Alolan Muck on the ditto makes sense. Put it at, If you put it anywhere else, you know, that would have been shut down. Strong energy. On to that Regirock, very close to uh, being able to use Stone Edge. 80, flip a coin, if heads, 40 more. You know what that does? That one shot's Zorark. Yes, it does. Lysander on the muck and just a pass. Again, Lysander, kind of the I gust kinda, effect of old. I like the Lysander versus the Guzma card here that he has in his list. I just noticed that because Guzma's going to force him to switch his active as well. So you playing Lysander lets him keep the Regirock in the active spot and, uh, and kind of handle the game how he wants to. Exactly. Um, you know, obviously having the, the Red Rock go back to the bench where it can't be targeted, uh, you know, makes it a little bit harder to pivot around. Yep. Um, and Joe won't be able to target down, so keep it in the active. Makes sense. Good deck building. Back over to Joe. Draws a card for the turn, thinking about it. Resource management, Orangaroo, the Russell Lapar special. Parallel City, limit Michael's bench versus Seeker. Get a supporter out of your discard. He just goes ahead and plays that Sycamore counter catcher going, and I missed the other card. Joe really changing the pace here, keeping me on my toes. Yeah, I'm trying to see what he's going to be digging for here. I mean, obviously more Zoroarks here in a sense there. Um, however, he wants to get this muck out of the active spot. Don't see any float stones in his list that will do that. So he's probably trying to get set up in the background while this muck kind of takes the damage here. He may know that, uh, he does, that, that, that Michael does not play any Guzma at all. So he probably is kind of buying his time to get to where he needs to be set up and before uh, Michael can make the first move. Joe with a couple quick trades. Um, uh, part of our part of our screen is a little encumbered there, but um, I, I presume some sort of maybe just switch 
If you take a look here, uh, what Joe's got on his list, does he there is one switch there, there yes. There you go. So probably found the switch off the trades, uh, put the resource management Orangaroo back in, DCE for the monkey. And uh, those attacks are live. Resource management, of course. Uh, three cards from your discard, put them on the bottom of your deck. <laughs> oh. So he's going to be putting the three cards down there. I wonder if he's going to take advantage of the profound knowledge attack that also he has uh, to maybe hit Red Rock later on to, to uh, break the focus ash. Um, and actually, if he does that there, it also negates the last chance potion. Correct. Last chance potion reads 30 or less. Um, if you don't quite get there to put the, the Red Rock down below 30, then obviously last chance potion, no, uh, not a factor. Draw for turn. Escape board on Jirachi. Hoopa staying in the active and just a switch into Jirachi. Bunnelby comes down. Colorus for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight cards coming for Michael, and he hasn't used Stellar Wish yet. He's just digging for an energy, and I think he's just going to start swinging for the fences. Yeah, here, yeah I think it's going to begin right now. Here, you got the escape board on the Jirachi right now. And I think this is, like you said, just start coming in uh, and taking out these Pokemon one at a time here with Stone Edge. I do like that he opted to bench to Bunnelby. It still keeps him safe from any prizes that Joe can take and actually, like, you know, win the game here, but also gives him an extra card to draw with Colors. Tropical Beach going to bounce the Parallel City. Regirock coming down. Another Focus Sash on the Reggie boy, but I don't see an energy in there. I think Michael might have just missed it. And I, and I just come back to your point there, is that these limited amount of energies, granted he has nine energies total that he can attach to his Regirock. Actually, in reality, all ten can be attached there. He does, he can require a colorless energy. He does play the one darkness energy. However, um, whiffing there on eight cards is not a good sight to see. But I think he's in a good spot. I think this is, Joe has to do a lot to pilot through this here. And even to get to that Articuno strategy, he has to get another bench spot, right now, which he does not have right now. Quick Ultra Ball for Joe after he puts down a Parallel City to bounce the Tropical Beach. Another Zorark GX coming down, and now Versus Seeker pulling to the front and N. Joe playing the end doesn't want to discard too many more resources uh, to that Professor Sycamore. However, Michael probably breathing a sigh of relief because he needs another crack at an energy here. He needs, a, he needs another Outcast so fresh, so clean. New hand right now to try to get an energy to get this Regirock on the ball moving, but he also needs a, a way to switch out this hoop that isn't active as well. So two pieces here that needs to be found for Katron here, a couple pieces for Joe to really start disrupting Michael's strategy here. Um, and the other energy comes up and lots of Jirachi there, and I can't tell if he found himself a switch effect. Quick trade number one. Throwing away a Guzma, I believe. Trade number two. Can't quite tell what that is. Discard pile has found its way off the off the screen. Uh, and red card. Red card. card. All right. All right. Um, oh, my Michael gosh. can't be too jazzed about that. However, uh, I don't think he's super devastated by it either. Um, at this stage in the game, it's, it's clearly going to be a little bit grindier of an affair. And uh, Michael was really just looking for two cards or a way to access those two cards. Uh, an energy and a Karina would be a great start. Here's the one thing I, I, I do want to point out there is that if it does come down to this mill game where neither player takes the offensive, like uh, Joe keeps uh, Ranger active, Michael did just get rid of his Bumblebee. So to counteract that right now, it'd be really tough for him there. I don't see any recovery cards as far as Rescue Stretcher. Oh, there is one Super Rod, so you still can bring back the Bumblebee for later on. But if it does come down to that, um, could be a little bit uh, in favor of Joe at that point. Cynthia for Michael after Joe uses resource management. I believe it was red card counter catcher uh, and one other card that I just missed, Jeff. So apologize to the folks watching at home. Uh, but Michael, Cynthia going to erase the damage of that red card, give him six. And scramble switch is a thing. Uh, no other energy, just a pass. Michael bringing the right strategy to the table, but really just can't cobble together the few pieces he needs to get going. And Joe has to be breathing a sigh of relief. I don't think he think I don't ever thought he believed that this Orangaroo would be in the active this long. Then definitely not at this point now, but he's very happy to go ahead and go into uh, be able to resource management these cars back in, get those switches back, get any of those past supporters for, and the computer search back is a big thing too, which I believe he already did bring that back. Just played it, just pulled um, a card to hand. She shuffled in quite rapidly. Trade number one, I think that's an Acerola. Trade number two, give him two cards. Video game players, you ready? Here we are for round 
Michael Catron taking a good look at uh, Man, Joe's discard uh, and Joe has three cards left in deck. Rescue Stretcher gonna double that in size, bring it up to six, assuming he has three Pokemon in the discard. There's two. Interesting enough, the Joe's deck does not play the Propagation Eggs here, and I believe it's because obviously he goes over that um, the heavy Alola Muck line there. Can't really propagate when your basic Pokemon abilities are ineffective. I uh, believe a Tapu Lele, Alolan Grimer, and mm, I'm not even going to. Oh, uh, the other the other Orangaroo uh, found his way back into the deck. Versus Seeker. Versus Seeker for Rocket's Handiwork. That's what it looks like. All right. Time to go to work, Joe says. Oh, and the top one was the energy. <laughs> However, Michael did get an energy off the red card, so he's not completely out. And a max, and max Luxer. So just, a, just needs a way to get this Hoopa out of the active. And Michael really feeling the pressure now. You know, Lysander is great when Reggie's in the when Reggie Rock is in the active. Not so excellent when you're having trouble pivoting out of your Hoopa. Yeah, and, you know, look at his hand right now. He's got a constellation of cards with all those Jirachi and not much else going on here. Another Max Lux to set up the other Regirock. And that whiffs. Not a high probability there this late in the game uh, because of how many basic fightings are actually in the deck to begin with. Might be in the prizes. And, of course, two are attached. And just to pass, three Jirachi in hand for Michael <laughs> Katron. This is not how he drew this matchup up at all. We, call, we call that Orion's belt, Kirk. All the stars right there aligned. <laughs> There's a quick trade of Giraffe Rig by Joe going to the discard draw two. Uh, I believe that's a Tapu Lele GX also going to be traded away for two more cards. Counter catcher. Another Tapu Lele going down. Maybe the other one was the Articuna. A couple full arts there. Sometimes uh, a little bit tough to discern. Uh, but Joe has pretty much the only resources left in his deck are the ones he wants. So I'm curious to see what he does here. Versus Seeker, going to buy back Rocket's Handiwork. Rocket's Handiwork, yep, going to be go. Tails and Heads. So that's two. Darkness Energy, Cynthia going away. So this is and the big thing here. we got to hope that – Michael has to hope that one, his Super Rod doesn't go down and that his one Switch card potentially here um, does not go away either. Um, Joe has – clearly identified his game plan he knows he understands that michael's clearly having issues getting that hoopa out of the active um and joe just resource management going past to michael pass back to joe he draws for a turn rescue stretcher shuffle three in just hand it to michael figure it out yep figure it out michael gonna quickly shuffle those up throw those uh <laughs> throw the deck back dejectedly in joe's direction another trade for joe gonna look at two gonna see a field blower and a tapu lele gonna trade that away two more cards for joe Man. and i think he's just trying to find his way to more handiwork turns yeah this this is the well position spot right now where he's he's easily able to cycle through the handiworks with a ring active now Tr uh bringing back the rest of stretcher bringing back the computer search verse seeker right there for handiwork gonna go ahead and um, be able to resource management back three cards. He's going to get double heads here. We only see the two S again. Single heads. Nest ball. I can't tell what that other card is. It looks like a throwback art. Potion. Potion. Is it a potion? That's a potion. Versus Seeker. Here we go. Resource management versus Seeker. Versus Seeker. Parallel, Parallel City. City. Yep. We've got to bump the beaches down. Don't give him any options here to be able to draw out of this situation here. Versus Seeker right now. Going to see a draw support here. Big Colrus. Col Colrus for eight. That is <laughs> – Michael shows shows the pretty decent poker can. Three of a kind of three Jirachi and one <laughs> a, a Reggie Rock kicker there. Yeah. All those going to find their way back in. Michael going to be drawing eight, and he really just wants a way to get this hoop out of the active. So what else can we see here that he can get out of here? He, he's already played a switch. Uh, it, honestly, he could use another energy right with Scramble Switch to be able to switch to the active spot. Max Elixir going to come down. <laughs> hits it uh even though five energy in deck you know uh uh peek around expanded peek around players would probably be having a, a aneurysm watching michael play five basic energies and hitting all these max elixirs there we go it was that escape rope he does see an escape rope here who what is going to be the target for joe to be taken down here with oh well, has to flip ahead to take down anything uh, a couple strong energy there just going to be able to oh, get strong energy i did yep. not see that here with the glare 
strong energy, going to be able to take it down. Joe drawing for turn versus Seeker. Rocket's handiwork was the plan. Now that Michael's gotten his Regirock in the active, he's ready to go to work. We're going to see versus Seeker for uh, Gladian. Look at your prize cards. There's choose the water. Card, yep. Choose a card from it. So now, so now we're, now we're going to go, go through and go in with Articuno GX right now. Going to hit him with the uh, what's called Cold Crush GX. It's guard all ener energy from both active Pokemon. This is going to be uh, a, a good haymaker. However, Michael at least has been building up energy on his backup Regirock. The real concern being, once that GX marker flips, how does he... And the red card. And the counter catcher just... A bunch of stuff going down here. Interesting enough, like so. Hard retreat. I think Joe's like. Okay, oh. so he's, he's going back to the Rangaroo strategy here. Bring up Articuno. Hard retreat back into the. Hard retreat back into the Rangaroo here and rebring and bring back in that Hoopa strategy to Demille. I think oh, Joe is. Joe getting a little too feisty with uh, with that counter catcher. A little discussion happening at the table. It Articuno can't me, retreat. Articuno has two retreat costs. Yeah, it seemed to me that uh, Joe was. It seemed to me that Joe was setting up that Cold Crush GX play. Yes. And now we're just. And what's happening? So looks like the looks like the. Counter catcher was a trade and not. I understand. Car was the trade and not um, the effect. It seemed to me like he clearly uh, pointed at the hoopa. We're going to get uh, maybe a little clarification from Drew, our table judge, today uh, mm -hmm. a little bit later to see what kind of what happened there. Uh, versus Seeker, versus Seeker, excuse me, uh, for Michael Catron. And uh, as as much as we praise that lys or that Lysander to begin with. Uh, an yeah. opportunity at a Guzma here wouldn't feel so bad. Scramble switch in hand. Ba Tropical Beach going to bounce the parallel city. Another Jirachi hitting the, bin, okay, or hit hitting the bench and ba basic fighting off that Tropical Beach for one. So right now, Articuno's an active. We're going to go back to this. Now he's probably going to go back and apply that uh, Rocket's Handiwork strategy, switching back to the um, Orangaroo. And let's we'll see what else he's going to do. Some trading here to get back to his spot here and start that chain again as he had it prior to when that Hoopa was active. A lot of time running down off the clock. We are down to almost uh, to just 31 minutes. And this game has only seen two prizes taken between both players versus Seeker. Going to announce N, I presume. Michael pretty committed to shuffling up. Joe says, I only have uh, six of these left, so I'll just take them all, I guess. It's interesting enough. So, like prior to this, we thought the counter catcher was traded. However, he just played it on the Hoopa. So, I, I'm curious what that interaction was previously, as far as was he able to take back the card? Yeah, maybe, or? maybe a little friendship rewind. Like Joe was like, "I got a little too excited. I, I meant to cold crush and counter catcher next turn." Yeah. Um, and uh, Michael Catron, ever the ever the gentleman, said, "Yeah, that's fine, bud." And a scoop for Michael Catron, not what I anticipated based on the dichotomy of these decks. Yep. Michael Catron really bringing to the table what you'd look on paper and say anti Zorark GX deck, mm -hmm. but these Zorark control decks find a way, especially in the hands of incredibly talented players such as yep. Joe Rudiger, found a route to success, saw just uh, you know a beam of light of, uh, of weakness, and just ran towards it. I really think that the, the biggest thing that held Michael back was just the uh, delayed energy. Um, I think he started out strong at the two energies right away on the Regirock there, but was not able to advance further than that. And once Joe established that strategy, got the four Zorics out, can constantly trade to loop through that Team Rocket's handiwork each turn, it really set Michael on the back foot. Counter catch to bring up the weak, uh, the weak, the high retreat Pokemon there, him whiffing energy on two Colrus attempts. Um, really set him back there. He couldn't take advantage of any early KOs. Some things that Michael might want to keep in mind is uh, a good way to battle uh, that Orangaroo strategy is using Bunnelby uh, mm -hmm. PRC, uh, of course, with Burrow and Rototiller, both really good ways to either put resources back mm -hmm. in your deck or mill, cu mill a couple cards off of your opponent. So, um, or because of, uh, I believe, Bunnelby's um, trait, Yep. Um, you can announce uh, two attacks, right? Yep. So. You do a trade to attack twice now, uh, and then uh, the big thing with that too is that since he has that trait to attack twice, he won't. He doesn't have that barrier effect there either. So the energy can also be lost on that bundle B as well. So it's a trade-off between um, both both interactions there. 
We are already bouncing down to the action. Michael Catron off to the race. Is stellar wish from the start. That Jirachi is asleep. Michael Catron finding a skateboard, putting it down to Zoru on Joe's side of the board. And we haven't quite seen Michael's hand yet. See the lifter. I did see a dark energy as well. I do not see the dark energy probably going down on his hoop at all. Things are going to go straight to the Red Rock. Uh, simply being, he plays a little muck. You're not going to get any mileage out of Hoopa. Yeah, and I think Michael's really sweating the, the – really regretting benching the Hoopa from game one. It was really uh, a point that Joe was able to leverage that higher retreat cost of two. Of course, no DCE in uh, Michael Catron's deck to make that retreat a little easier. Um, so another stellar wish. Going to find himself. Ooh, focus that's a scramble switch here. It looks like he has already Karina in hand, so you can go back and get any of those items. My operative versus Seeker, he beat me to it. Got to let me, got to let me commentate, Kate. You're going to just slow down, man. This kid is motoring. He knows how much time is left, how much time he's got. Just a pass. Sleep flip. Everybody go night, night. <laughs> Staying asleep. Jirachi in the active. Asleep behind the wheel. Tapu Lele GX. Uh, probably Bridget Wonder Tag. Or excuse me, Wonder Tag ability from the Tapu Lele GX grabbing Bridget. Um, are we right? We are right. Bridget coming down. Maybe Zoro Zoro Ditto. Zoro Zoro Rangaroo. Zoro Ditto Rangaroo. So many There's options. There's a lot of combinations there. I oh. think it starts with Ditto. Ditto's the flex play. you gotta have, got to have the Ditto out there. Going to get the Zoro. And this part going to be a Rangaroo. Ah, not yet. You don't need a Rangaroo just yet. Well, that'll be the last spot on the bench, so... You know, uh, you kind of put yourself in a position to have to wait for Michael to take the first knockout rather than mm -hmm. being able to initiate the resource management okay. as Joe did in game one. Um, so I can see there's a merit there of, yep. of getting a Rangaroo uh, with that resource management uh, attack on the bench now. However, Joe going through, taking some inventory. He's get, he gets one more if he wants it. Yeah, I think I agree with you there that the Rangaroo is going to be the call here just because you could, you know, instead of holding back and waiting for Michael to take that first hit there, you can actually initiate the strategy once you get your Zorax out. Electing to not take another Pokemon, just grabbing two, uh, which leads me to believe that that last spot on the bench can be filled by something he already has in hand. We'll see here. I think we did see Articuno in his hand as well, but I, that's a little too early to uh, pull off the Cold Crush GX. Uh, there's no energy on board to do that. Um Based on how Joe's deck is built, it's really to his advantage to um, let Michael take a knockout. Mm -hmm. uh, and the reason I say that is because being able to recycle that counter catcher, keep pulling up those clumsy Pokemon, um, i.e. Hoopa in this case, it hasn't been benched yet, uh, but that's really what Joe was uh, leveraging last time. I think Michael's going to stay away from benching Hoopa, try and just use these Jirachis, Stellar Wish, and mm -hmm. pivot back into these Regirocks. However... Something to consider here uh, as we go into game two. Karina coming down. Search your deck for a fighting Pokemon and an item card. We have probably going to see the Red Rock and a uh, skateboard come down here so you can repeat the. Adventure. Oh, Adventure, Adventure Bag does a skateboard pseudo Gives a Focus Sash and an escape board. We got a breakdown from uh, what happened in game one. Um, and it turns out my, uh, my good, my, my pals for life uh, shot call that uh, Michael, good guy Joe, and say, yeah, you can take your catcher back. Okay. Clearly not what uh, Joe was really intending to do. However, uh, Got to tip the cap to, to Michael to allow uh, to allow somebody to take uh, such a, a gre an egregious error, to be quite frank, back. 100%. Um, especially this early in the tournament. You hate to see that, but not punished. Good guy, Katron. So we did see there, just to kind of back up there, the adventure bag, focus sash, and a skateboard. Sailor Witches again, gas to Tropical Beach. Energy down with the elixir. How does he hit it? You know what? Nobody knows. But <laughs> It's a story for a different day. Energy coming down on the Reggie Rock. Tropical Beach is in the active. And just a beach back up to seven. We saw, I think, a couple Cynthia's there. And that Jirachi is still asleep. This is a good, this is a good spot, though, right now. I mean, uh, yes, Joke still has the out to the field blower to get rid of both the skateboards um, the, the, to hinder his retreat. Um, but I think we're just one turn away from Michael being able to start really you know, coming in and really wrecking through Joe's board right now. Uh, Alolan Muck coming down, going to shut down Jirachi and that Stellar Wish ability. Joe plays down the end that we just saw him grab, and both players going to shuffle up and draw six here in game two, round one, Hartford, Connecticut Regional Championship. 
you know, I gotta say, going back to game one right now, I really do merit how Joe was able to pilot around that match. Right now, go, going down and getting his Zork set up there, getting the team Rocket handy, uh, Rocket's handiwork set up to really mill it through Michael's deck, and then having that counter catcher again later on after all the switch cards have been utilized. Um, I like that he's able to find something through his list right now, even for these off scene strategies so you, you're not very familiar with, you know? Both players drawing six. Jeff Fieldblower ah, right, right there. off the end, electing to go double a skateboard. I think that's the right choice. I don't think Tropical Beach is too big of a trouble, especially because of the high counts of Parallel City mm -hmm. that we've seen out of Joe, especially exactly. game one. So, he uh, wants the beach he, himself. He wants, to, he wants to come jump to the beach party right now and get some cards himself. Double Nest Ball going to play them both at the same time since that Tropical Beach is in play and it's not a Parallel City. Um, you're just going to head <laughs> grab one Reggie Rock, fail, uh, fail the other one and keep the pace going. Another Jirachi coming down. Uh, Alolan Muck really kind of wreaking havoc on uh, the Stellar Wish. However, Assault Vest on a Regirock. Cynthia coming down. Michael going to shuffle six, shuffle in, draw six, similar to the end of the previous turn. However, now it's on his own terms. Yeah, but I do like the play here. He got rid of, he got rid of some cards in his hand, about three of them, benched another one there with Jirachi. I played the Assault Vest just to limit his hand down and see if he can draw out of this here. Energy. Um, and in beach, okay. So he, don't hasn't, he hasn't been able to put together the pieces. Every time he wants to pivot into attack, he hasn't been able to get out of the active. Even in this case, where it's a uh, easier to retreat Jirachi, and there's no Hoopa in sight, there's no Bunnelby in sight to, to pull up as a, a more difficult card to retreat, and he still can't get it together. Fortunate enough for him, unless his hand gets disrupted here this turn, he does have the energy to hard retreat the Jirachi. Um, and we can start seeing this Red Jirok, uh doing his attention here. And, uh, and, uh, and taking down these Zeruas one by one. And there's not even a Zorik out at all on Joe's side yet. Joe may be waiting a little bit, just kind of slow playing it. Um, not slow playing, but slow playing, putting down his yeah, Zoro exactly. checks. So Michael can't do too much damage and get too far ahead because the Regirock was so close to being powered up. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, because of the strong energy that was on there, um, you know, and another strong energy, excuse me, Easy knockout for Michael. Doesn't even have to flip the coin to take knockouts there. So Joe really wants to make sure when his Zorak GXs come down, he can use them to uh, big advantage and can't be taken advantage of. N going to give each player six cards. And here we see Katron does not have the pieces again, I don't think. To get Wait, the I think that was a switch in the middle. That might have been a switch in the middle of his hand. It was hard to see there. It might have been like that uh, the, um, the evolution set switch. It's hard to see there. He's, he's riffling through pretty quick. Uh, but we did see a trade come down, get rid of the crushing hammer. Can't use down a red rock. And then the beach. Beach for one. Top deck to energy. Max Elixir. If he's the energy off this, he's a. That's what I said. There's so many. <laughs> that's godlike. So, he, okay. So I guess he's opting just to set up the red rocks instead versus these Jirachis here. He knows the switch cards are in the deck. He's probably waiting for Joe to take the advantage here against some Zoroks down. Um. We'll see what he gets off his end. I think Michael is saying, like, what more do I need to do? He's like, I can't miss again, right? I feel like that's the question he's asking himself. Like, I can't miss again. Yeah, I think that big thing here was knowing that he has a limited account of energy. He wants to prioritize getting them on a red rocks. He wants to use the switch cards to get these Jirachis out of the active spot. Michael, there is one Zorak GX. I think Michael needs to take his first attack needs to be into a Zorak GX for two prizes. And I say that because if you hit into a Zorua, you know, and then Joe gets the first GX hit onto mm -hmm. Regirock, even though it's Focus Sash, even though there's other things in Michael's deck he can do, you really want to make sure that Joe has to lose two Pokemon attacking into it. Yep. Uh, so a reg before a Regirock yeah, is taken. And down. this is here, taking out a Zorua, it's like a wasted prize. You still got to take three more knockouts at the very, at the very least, uh, regardless. DCE Zorak GX coming down for Joe Rudiger. And this is um, interesting enough here. Is he going to take the KO here? Or it's going to be a hard retreat um, into something he's more comfortable with having in the in the driver's seat. Joe figuring out his turn. Rocket's handiwork. Double heads. Nope, just one here. Fighting Energy versus Seeker. So won't be able to chorus again. He does see the knockout. All right. All right. So here comes Regirock. Regirock coming to the party Stone late. Stone Edge ready to attack in. Strong energy coming down on Regirock. Michael Catron taking a look at the discard. 
if I'm Michael, I'm just I'm I'm throwing a not I'm not saying throw caution to the wind here, but what I am saying is you pick up the pace of play, you sacrifice your perfect decision making skills for your great decision making skills, yep. and you make sure this game completes. Yep. Honestly, it's gonna be I mean at this point where he's at right now is it's gonna be energy attach attack, energy attach attack, and then just go with the punches from there for the last chance potions, the potions, um, Pokemon Center ladies, all these different heal cards right now is, is where he's gonna have to play for this game right now. Uh, Last chance potion coming off there on that, this end. That's what he wants to see. Knock Takes out double KO. One. Double focus as to come off of that. All right. Zorua steps up. Draw for turn. I do see the water energy, and there's Articuno coming in right there. Cold Crush GX. And that's probably why uh, Joe opted to take that KO there. He knows he's going to bring up the Regirock and kind of lean him in a little bit there to, to get rid of all the energy. Right, so Joe's going to be able to cold crush GX and also still use cards such as Countercatcher. That's still live. Um, if if it's the uh, if it's what Joe wants to do, it's they're, they're a little less impactful now that Michael doesn't have a two retreater um, on the bench. However, Jirachi can't pick up a strong energy. Yep, his arms ain't that big. <laughs> Four cards coming. Actually, uh, you, you do see that basic fighting there, and an escape rope. So Michael's got options here. Cold Crush GX. Parallel City. It's almost like as if, if, there, if there was any Zorok deck that could be built to go against this, it's this, it's this build. Yeah, Articuno GX really, uh, pro you know, really proving its, uh, its, its metal here. And it's one slot that it takes up in the deck just too good. Michael going to just beach and end his turn. Um, I believe that's because the escape rope was in hand and just needs to find another energy. Yep. Ultra Ball going to pitch uh, Giraffe Rig, and I believe that's another Muck. And You're, Joe's going to find him. There's only, at the most, two more energies left in, in Katron's deck that could be attached to uh, his Red Rock on bench right now. Um, and that probably goes back to previously uh, before why he didn't attach that base energy to the Jirachi. He needs to save those little low cast energies for these Red Rocks. They need four to really start powering through. And. Yeah, only two left in deck. I believe he has already four in a discard there, three on a red rock already. So um, we'll see what else he can, he can roll through here, though, with, with, his, uh, with his N. Joe, as you mentioned, is going to N. Michael's going to draw four. Joe's going to draw five. Michael needs a way to switch and an energy. Scramble switch is, uh, so is just, away. Just, he's, he's one piece away now. Last chance potion is a card he wants to see as well. These Jirachis, they, they love Michael. They always showing up in his hand. He can't, he can't get rid of them. <laughs> Michael got a little bit of sweet scent on him. All the Pokemon coming in and shrouding around him. <laughs> that is a Pokemon ability. <laughs> you, you, can't, you can't knock the references, folks. Joe, second trade, filling up that hand. Red card coming off of it. Uh, red card would essentially just rinse Michael's hand. Jirachi comes down. Um, Michael going to check his deck for what he has left. And just a beach. Beach for three, Lysander, Focus Sash, and I believe the first card was Bunnelby. And then I think we're, you know, Ranger should be coming out here soon and we start promoting the strategy. We do see it in hand. We do see a parallel city. Um, but do we have energy and a way to switch to Actives around? I don't see any energy in his hand, but we do have, uh, at, we are active to two trades. Um, very well can find the DCE there. Gets the rest of Stretcher. Another trade. Did not find the DCE. Acerola going to come down. It is to note that that three that kind of looks like it's on Articuno actually isn't damage. It was just from the last handy handiwork roll um, that, that Joe did. So. Oh, man. And a red card right now. Going to restart Katrin after that. Here's the thing about red card. I understand it puts Michael down a lot of resources, but Michael has literally done nothing for his last two turns. Yes. So there, there's – there's definitely worth in considering, like, how good is his hand actually before I play this card. Yep. So, ops to end instead, holding that red card for later on there. He's probably waiting for that one big play to where he can, you know, uh, bring up the Orangaru, counter catch your red card, and then start promoting that handiwork strategy all in one sequence. Uh, Michael didn't really sandbag his uh, escape boards at the start of the game and got kind of dealt a big blow with just one field blower being able to take two of those out. Um, and hasn't really been able to find a good way to pivot since. Let's see if these four cards treat him a little bit better. Scramble Switch, Last Chance Potion versus Seeker should get him close. 
Is that I, a computer search? I wonder if he's going to go ahead and play the scramble switch and then go for a Colrus. Very well could be. But that, and that's the risky call there is that, you know, you're under parallel, so you can't bench any more Pokemon. Can you get to a point to where, and here we go. Now we're going to resource management. Uh, a little uh, breakdown of that turn. Computer search, pitching away Plumeri, and I believe it was a Cynthia, mm -hmm. uh, probably searching for the missing piece, in this case either the DCE or the Switch. Um, and then pivot into your Rangaroo, as you mentioned. Time to resource manage. Uh, DCE Switch. And uh, Versus Seeker, I believe, went back in. It's Cynthia off the top for Michael. Or, excuse me, uh, Versus Seeker, Cynthia for Michael. Going to shuffle up, draw six. And yep. he needs to find a way to switch his cards out and an energy. Three, four. Energy. Did we get this? And escape rope. Energy right. escape rope. All right, we're here. And he takes a knockout on, actually, he does take a knockout on Articuno, so I wonder if Joe's going to opt to take the Articuno and ace roll it later on. Yep, that's exactly what's going to happen here. Articuno does resist fighting as well, so even if it does get to that 120, 140, 160 with the strong energy, still won't be enough at the resistance here. Hey, oh, looks like he does Landmaker here, brings back the two tropical beaches. Yep. Uh, heads up play, Landmaker still going to be doing quite a bit of damage, so it's 30 damage and return two stadiums from your discard to your hand. Uh, but with the strong energies, uh, I believe there's two. It's another 40 damage. That's a, a 70 damage hit. And I don't see the damage. Uh, no, Landmaker does not do any damage. I'm sorry. Where did I, I? I wrote down in my notes it did 30. Interesting. Well, lessons learned moving on. Uh, Red Rock promos, Landmaker attack not used too often. Got it wrong, Jeff, here in <laughs> day one. Still knocking off the cobwebs, I guess, from my Reggie Rock based knowledge. So we do see here, looking at was, what it was, a Guzma here and then a red card, or it might have been a counter. No, it had to been a Guzma to switch to Articuno out yep. there. So Guzma up here, bringing up the Jirachi. Red card now. And then resource manage. Versus Seeker. Is, uh, I believe, the first card to be uh, managed. Parallel City, <laughs> knowing that Michael just threw two Tropical Beach back in the deck. This is such a, like, this is such a fun battle back and forth with how, like, each player trying to play out one step ahead right now. Resource manager going through. Michael. He does have Colrus right now. Colrus being a big draw card right now. Does he have any switch cards left? He should have one escape board. Uh, no, both escape boards are gone with that field blower there. So it's really going to come down to the energy the energy if he has that many basics left i believe we've seen three go away one could be caught up in the prizes tropical beach bouncing the parallel city beach for one pass yeah, <laughs> yeah it definitely we see here that joe did find the weak spot here in katron's deck and that is the limit of switch cards in his list here between scramble switch switch and then i think that's in escape boards and escape rope that's really it there you get rid of escape board escape rope has already been used um, we haven't seen Scramble Switch used yet. It has been his hand. And I'm not familiar for sure if he played Switch or not yet there. So there could be still two Switch options left in his deck. I believe Switch and Scramble Switch are the last ones left. Um, however, 10 minutes, 30 seconds on the clock. And you can't think that bodes too, too well for Michael, given, as the, given how the board state looks right now. Um, Michael really needs to get a Red Rock in the active, really needs to be announcing a knockout every single turn. And Joe, just going to use every single ability he has available to him. <clears throat> to be quite frank, resource management, it's a slow attack. Even, <laughs> if the, even if the three cards he wanted were right on top, it's a slow attack. You still have to pull them out, show them, put them yep. on the bottom, pass. Uh, it's not you know just chipping damage on him moving through. So Joe's deck is just not quick. Yeah, and you know, Michael's is, you know, Playing his own play, a start as soon as he announced the resource management, Michael does begin his turn there as Joe decides what three cards. In that instance, there was a was the a verse seeker. We did see he faba away the tropical beach as well. There's the potion, no switch cards here. He might be opting the Bunnelby strategy to bring back some of those switch cards as well, but we still need the energy to do so. Bunnelby down. Beach for two, Focus Sash, kind of some of these clunkier cards that you want to get on your Regirocks are finding, they keep finding their way into Michael's hand and really just making, like lowering the quality of his draws. On the other side of the coin, Joe Rudiger has traded away everything that's irrelevant and only resource manages stuff back that he truly needs and wants to see every turn. Mm -hmm. 
I, I, it's a it's a it's a long long climb for Michael parallel city coming down tropical beach gonna go to the discard and Michael deciding which Pokemon he wants to throw to the discard <clears throat> you notice Bunnelby sticking around now Bunnelby sticking around right now is gonna have to uh, counteract the um, the handiworks that should be coming here soon Lele getting a DC here to be able to attack the Bunnelby as well if anything were to happen to the Zarangaru so Joe, Joe's, Joe's hitting every piece right now in this chess game. You got to you gotta tip your cap to Joe. Incredibly skilled player. Uh, took a matchup that, like we mentioned on paper, looks pretty good for, for Michael. And he is finding a lane and just hitting it as hard as humanly possible. Um, and Michael just has a couple stumbles here and there that have just allowed Joe to kick the doors wide open. They, they had to have, like, testing each other or something at some point here because Joe has this mapped out so perfectly. He had to have known something going into this matchup here. I mean, unless he was able to quick think a strategy right then in the spot, like, oh, okay, you're going to wall behind these Reggie Rocks here. Let me go ahead and handy work your deck away. Whatever it might be, Articuno GX also being a key piece here. Probably the MVP of this matchup, to be honest. And the way he's piling this right now is phenomenal. Resource management, versus seeker, field blower, computer search. Michael onto his turn, takes a quick look at the discard, takes a quick look at his hand. And there's the switch. Reggie Rock stepping up. Cynthia going to shuffle in and give Michael, excuse me, six cards. <clears throat> well, at least Michael gets a knockout here. He does get a knockout here. Arno Kuno GX is not going to be doing anything at all uh, now that the GX tag is done. So it's really going to be Lele going to pinch down his um, Red Rock, going to pinch down the Focus Ash here. But 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, going to be able to use the last chance potion to we finally get to see that pop into action here. We'll yeah, that, see. that Regirock promo only with 110 HP. I, I, let's just see it once, right? Like I was going to see it happen. Yeah, just like just once, please. Six minutes left here. He's going to have he's, rescue he's, stretcher he's so throwing back some Lele's and Orangaroo, giraffe rig. Let's see about the verse seeker for N. Six minutes. Hopefully he doesn't hit the heel card here. Six minutes, 30 seconds on the clock. And Michael's just like, look, for all the times I've seen last chance potion in these last two games, now that I might this actually. This deck is pretty thin. He should be able to hit it. There it there is, it right is. there. All right. And a Pokemon Center Lady, which not really too helpful right now. He's going to be right at 110. So. But that helps for those chip attacks, as you mentioned. Focus Ash going to be broken. Last chance potion going to heal. Michael saying, like, yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to save this. So now that Regirock can finally pick up one of those redundant uh, focus sashes that we've seen just that keep popping up. Here's the thing, though. He doesn't have a, reg a, a focus sash to reapply. So even if he goes to take this hit on the uh, Lele here, he's going to need even both heads still does not knock out this Lele. So Lele takes the return knockout the following turn. Alex to just draw. That's... Alex to just draw. I'm not sure what he could do at this point then. Uh, this Red Rock's going to go down here with the energy drive from Tapu Lele. It's going to end his whole beach away and field blower it. <laughs> Good night. Joe just. He has slammed little, the door little, short, shut. A yeah, little too much, a little too late. A uh, little too much to overcome and started that, that comeback a little too late in the game. Uh, Michael finds himself on the back foot and Joe just cruising through. Five minutes and 10 seconds left on the clock. And that's a knockout. Bring up Bunnelby, draw for turn, There's fares the focus, focus sash. sash. Just one second too late. Michael pitches the hand, scoops it up. Joe Rudiger, round one win. Zork GX control deck. Uh, you know, not playing Seismitoad, the flavor yep. of Daytona. Yep. However, uh, certainly has some good inclusions. Articuno GX worked marvelously. Yep. Uh, Almost as if he had the Katron soul read and knew it's you're bringing this Omega Barrier BS. I'm gonna be ready for it. Cold Crush, baby, flip it. He saw right through Katron there. Had it from the strategy from the start there. Uh, as soon as all the Red Rocks down, you know there had to have been some kind of trigger prior to this game or something there because the, the way he mapped that that matchup perfectly right there and knew where to, how to go after his cards to set the Articuno after the attacks. So many different nuances there that you know uh, Joe pulled off. Um, he had a great. He, he, he spotted that really, really well. Really well. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Joe maybe defaulted to whatever his uh, knowledge set was uh, for Primal Groudon matchups because yep. I think the the pace very, is kind of kind of the same. So if you have the the 
cards available, like the Articuno GX, I think you know how to leverage those a little bit. But we are going to be right back with round one winner, Joe Rudiger. See you in a second. Welcome back to Hartford, Connecticut, everybody. I am here with round one winner, Joe Rudiger. Zorark GX Control, really putting Katron through the paces there in round one. <laughs> um, you see that Reggie Rock, you see Jirachi. Did you have an inkling of what was going on before that game actually started? Uh, yeah, me, uh, me and him actually room together constantly. So, yeah, it, it was pretty pretty dumb seeing our names against each other round one. But, uh, like, I knew his whole deck. He knew mine. We thought he is a pretty favorable matchup, but I also got pretty lucky with my handiwork flips game one, like discarding energy plus supporter pretty much every time. Um, so he just wasn't able to like uh, find his switching cards like he needed to. So uh, a big change that Katron did between game one and game two is making sure that Hoopa never hit the bench. Yeah. Once you saw the Hoopa uh, down game one, is that kind of how you saw, okay, maybe this is where I can find an avenue to really resource manage uh, the cards I need back? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what you do in the matchup is you should never really try and take prizes. The only reason I did is because I prized double Aranguru Gladi in game two. Uh, so I just I literally couldn't use it. <laughs> so I, I, again, I, you, you need to use it in the matchup. Um, but the Hoopa is definitely something you don't want to put down in that matchup, um, and he found that out very quickly um, just because you can't escape board it. Escape board doesn't do anything, so it just gets stuck in the active longer because you can only use switch and escape rope with it. All right. Uh, big change from Daytona to uh, today. Uh, no Seismitoad EX in your deck uh, to, to lock down items. Uh, what brought you to that change? Um, I didn't. I don't think Seismitoad DX is that important right now. This deck really isn't like that much of a resource management deck as it is like an attack and control deck. It's more of like towards NASC deck where you just uh, keep your opponent under parallel the whole time and just hit them. And then when you get low on resources, just go into a Ranger and then you turn into a control deck. The deck's pretty much like a couple different archetypes in the same deck because that's just how good Zorak is. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, you, oh, limited time left with Zorak, yeah. obviously in the standard format, mm -hmm. but expand it, staying good and staying oh, yeah. great moving forward. What do you want to see round two to keep your tournament moving in the right direction? Um, to be honest, I really don't care what I hit. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, I think everything's a pretty winnable matchup, and I'm just I'm ready for the tournament. <laughs> All right, Joe, I appreciate it. Congratulations on winning round one, and Thank hopefully you. we'll see you in day two. Talk to you a little bit more. Thank you. Thanks, sir. And we'll be right back. Round two action. <laughs> 